My name's Greg Hubert. And my name is Gina Hubert. We were high school sweethearts and have been married for 33 years this coming June. Plus, we dated 10 years. Yes, that is 43 years together. It was in those years of dating that Gina and I formed a deep relationship with the Lord and were discipled by godly men and women, which formed a solid biblical foundation for what we were to experience in the years ahead. In fact, the family we envisioned having as newlyweds is nothing close to anything God actually gave us. We were young and innocent, filled with anticipation in hopes of having our own big family. And in April of 92, after four years of marriage, our firstborn son, Zachary, arrived six weeks early, but healthy. Less than two years later, our second son, Tyler, was born. It was like a storybook, easy deliveries, healthy babies, and now a happy family of four. At this time, I took a job in Hawaii. As a family, we were so excited to be able to move to the island of Oahu and live close to the ocean. Working as a salesman for a medical device company, I traveled the islands while Gina stayed home with our two young ones. It seemed picture perfect. But then the tides turned. We noticed Zachary's development was beginning to decline. He began to lose language, eye contact, and wanted to isolate. So we were quick to take him to the best doctors on the island. After many visits, exams, and tests, we received the news that your son has ASD, Autism Spectrum Disorder. It hit us as an eruptive sonic wave. Our souls dropped from under us. What does this mean? My mind swirled to grasp what his life and ours might now be like with the presence of a disability. In fact, in the days ahead, while Gina and I were absorbing this news, she mentioned in passing that she noticed a similar decline of pattern of developmental delay with Tyler. Nope, I said, you're kidding, right? God wouldn't do this a second time. That's not even funny. Yet, sure enough, Tyler was officially diagnosed with autism a couple of years later. It was at this time we pumped the family brakes really hard to listen to the Lord regarding any more children. Was God trying to tell us we were doing something wrong? or he didn't want us to have any more kids? After much prayer, we concluded that if God wanted to bless us with a third child, even a child with autism, we would welcome that child into our lives, no matter how challenging. Consequently, our third son, Tate, was born in 1997. And yes, Tate was diagnosed with autism as well. The family we thought we would have was nothing like we could have ever imagined. We look to Christ for direction because in this world and even our church, many people, professionals, and friends did not know much about disabilities, especially autism. Well, here are three relational areas God has taught us to focus on in this journey of autism related to keeping our marriage alive. First is our personal relationship with Jesus. Although we came into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as children, the depth and authenticity of our faith was put to the test with the arrival of ASD in our family. And I could share story after story of major hardships with our boys over the years. Still, because we have a personal relationship with our loving Heavenly Father, He has brought meaning into our lives. God did not curse or punish us by giving us three special needs boys, but instead ushered us into a life we would never have chosen on our own, to live, love, and learn from three of the greatest teachers of God's love, Zachary, Tyler, and Tate. God has used our family to encourage and reach more people with the hope of Jesus Christ, people who are isolated, fatigued, and hopeless. That would never have happened without autism in our world. Without God, I do not see how anyone can experience hope or purpose. Second is our respite relationships. In a survey Johnny and friends conducted in 2020, they wanted to discover the greatest need for a family living with disability in the United States. You know what that need is? Respite. Only 8% of eligible children use respite care support. And get this, 75% of family respite care needs remain unmet. When families were asked what their number one need was, do you know what it is? Respite. In our experience as a family, regular respite or a break from the continual care of our boys was an absolute necessity, occurring at least every other week. From the time the boys were babies, 
Gina and I would go on date nights. We always wanted the boys to understand that our marriage came first before they did, and we were in love. We saw through the years that their loud and exaggerated behaviors would subside when we spent regular time together. When the boys wouldn't sleep or were acting out and having extreme meltdowns, we would immediately reevaluate, even in front of the boys, whether we were spending enough time together and if we were regularly getting out on dates. Relationships with our church, family, and friends afforded us regular respite for a sustainable marriage. And finally, our individual relationships. In the beginning of many marriages, individual same-sex friendships are often cast aside, thinking a spouse can fulfill all your needs. <laughs> Once strong friendships gradually disappear, we all know that thinking is not true. But even more revealing is how difficult it is to find another couple having similar hearts with whom you can maintain a friendship. If you can find another couple who supports you and all four of you get along, well, bottle that friendship up and never let it go. We could not find one, so we individually develop friendships. This way, I could stay at home with the boys while Greg would go out with his friend or friends to be encouraged for a couple hours, or an overnight or weekend to gain refreshment for a soul. In like manner, Greg would encourage me to go and spend time with my friends. We have been doing this for over 25 years with some of the same friends. They know our family, our hearts, and it's a safe place to share our hurts and hopes each week. Let me leave you with this verse in Isaiah 26.3. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord God is an everlasting rock. If you don't know Jesus personally, turn to him today. If you do know Jesus, trust in the rock of your salvation. For only in him will you find perfect peace, even in the whirlwind of disability. Your journey, I am sure, is different than ours, but we are in the same world. Thank you for letting us share our story today. Thank you, and may God bless you as you continue the messy, heavy lift of life to people created with God-designed abilities.